Hi everyone. I got a really great question from one of my members just yesterday that I wanted to share with all of you and I'd really love to do more of this. I'm finally starting to get more into just using my phone to do quick sort of impromptu Q&A videos. Often I overthink my videos and I get a bit nervous and I have to do the full setup with the camera but I really just want to embrace just doing things as I feel like I can that way I can kind of give back to you all for all of your support a little bit more readily and it's fun for me too and it's kind of less pressure and still really useful for you hopefully so this one is for Kay I have already given Kay a um uh, written response to this but she was happy for me to share this for everybody's benefit so I hope it's useful and it's about freezer storing whole grain for sourdough bread making I just want to say too thanks to the lovely people on my buy me a coffee page some of you who are members of the Ellie's Everyday buy me a coffee group um, who funded this microphone this is a really cool little high quality microphone that I'm using for my plugged into my smartphone so thanks everyone the audio is much better now thanks to that I really appreciate it anyway back to Kay's question hello Kay Kay's in Victoria I uh, hope you're doing well down there um, Kay said hi Ellie safe travels to the grains festival I cannot wait I'm going in two days time she said question when removing grain from the freezer to sealed jars or containers how long before I can put them through the mill so presumably Kay has a mock mill or some sort of bench top grain mill. Um, she said, can I quicken up the process by pouring the grain onto a cookie sheet and placing it uh, in the oven on a low setting um, or in a proofer? Um, it's such a good question. So the reason why Kay is asking how long do you have to wait is because for people who are storing their grain in a freezer, and I do recommend you either, if you can, store your whole grain in a freezer or at least put it into a freezer and store it there for a week or two because that um, kills off any weevil eggs and, and just gives it a nice freezer treatment to sort of prepare it for, for pantry storage because some of those insect eggs will be killed by uh, freezing for a couple of weeks. Um, but when you take whole grain out of the freezer, depending on your environment and the temperature difference, I presume your room temperature is a lot warmer than your freezer temperature. And if you've got any humidity in your environment, that will attract condensation on the surface of the grain <clears throat> or the container that the grain is in. So you need to wait some time. And I've got a video that talks all about grain storage that demonstrates this and shows this in depth. But the basic thing is that um, my, pro my process that I use anyway is I take my grain out of the freezer and very quickly transfer it into my pantry, my kitchen, smaller storage containers. I put the lid on really quickly, especially in summer when it's warm and really humid here. And then I let, those, um, let the grain inside the container come down to the warmer room temperature or come up to the warmer room temperature I should say um, just sitting on the bench sometimes in really hot summer environment where it's really humid I have to put a towel underneath and all the condensation collects on the outside of the container then not on the grain itself if I just took my grain out of the freezer and put it into a bowl depending on the climate the weather at the time the grain would attract condensation on the surface, making it damp, and then you can't mill it. The grain needs to be really nice and dry. So this is why this is an issue. So back to Kay's question, I did say to this to her, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, generally speaking, it only takes an hour or two, depending on the size of the container. Um, but if your container is fairly you know reasonably reasonably small maybe only a kilo or two of grain in it it should, shouldn't take any more than an hour or two for it to come down to or sorry come up to a warmer room temperature um, and the, all the condensation that might form on the outside of the container should should have passed by then and you can wipe it off and and put the grain through the mill but if you want to to speed things up as Kay has asked about 
I haven't tried it, but I can't see why you couldn't just put the grain onto a cookie sheet and then put it in a super dry environment. You might even be able to put it in front of a fan, maybe, to, to prevent or to dry off any condensation that might form on the grain. I wouldn't necessarily put it in a proofer because a proofer isn't a dry environment, it's a warm environment. But if there's any humidity in the air inside the proofer, then that is going to still condense on the surface of the grain. Um, but in an oven, I think you could do that. Or even better, if you had a dehydrator, you could use a dehydrator and do it very quickly that way. But probably most people don't have dehydrators or, you know, don't have them set up for everyday sort of grain preparation use. I don't have a dehydrator. But putting it on a, on a big um, baking sheet in the oven and putting the oven on very, very, very low, like just on the lowest setting, as long as there's some dry air coming through over the grain to dry off any condensation that might form or to prevent any condensation, that's all you want. The other thing you could do, which I would be more inclined to do, would be to get an old plastic bag, some, like just get a reused plastic bag if you've got one or a, a Ziploc bag if you've got one, but please reuse it. You know, don't, we don't really want to be using plastic any more than we really need to. But I would be putting my grain, the amount that I need, into a bag and then laying that out flat just with a towel underneath. That way you're spreading it out. It's not going to be in a large container. It's going to warm up a lot faster than if it's in a container with with a, a bigger volume of grain. So that's one way to speed up the process. You'll still get the condensation probably, but it will be on the outside of the bag and you can just sit the bag on a towel and just wipe it off that way. Um, the other final thing that I did say to Kay was that if you are really, really quick, you can put your grain straight from the freezer, like you gotta be super quick, especially if you've got high humidity, put it straight from the freezer straight into the grain mill and skip the whole worry about condensation altogether. But you have to be fast. Um, and yes, again, that depends on your environment. But the grain, if you if you run your grain through your mill, say if it's a, a, a stone bench top mill, like a mock mill like I have, and I think maybe Kay has a mock mill too, I can't remember. Um, if you put frozen grain in there, you'll still get lovely flour. It will make a loud more of a cracking sound because the grain is frozen as it's being milled but you can generally speaking unless I probably wouldn't do it here in the middle of summer when it's really high humidity because that condensation forms on the grain so fast I would tend to just flatten it out and put it in a, a bag and just let it uh, warm up first and and get rid of any potential condensation but if your climate's fairly dry or your inside temperature is fairly dry and, and it's and it's not too warm, then, yeah, I would just go straight from the freezer straight into the mill, throw it in there as quick as you can, and that should work. Anyway, thanks very much for such a great question, Kay. I'm really sorry to all the members who really enjoyed my podcast that I was sharing there. It was something that I really loved doing and I really like this kind of Q&A format. And I think now that with the help of this microphone that you helped me to get and just using my smartphone, like sitting here in my office, I can do some of your member questions one by one and then share them with everybody. So I hope that's um, useful for all of you. So members, um, please send me your questions. Send me an email. Tell me if you give me permission to share them publicly for everybody on YouTube. That way we can all benefit from it. Um, and for anybody who's just watching this in the public and they're curious about it, head to buy me a coffee slash, oh, sorry, buy me a coffee.com slash Ellie's every day slash membership. And you'll find out about what's on offer there. It's just a way for, um, people to get a little bit of extra support from me with their homemade sourdough bread making or their soap making and it also supports me in return for all of the work that I'm doing and um, all of the free resources that I put on YouTube for everybody. Anyway that is enough. I'm signing off now. I'm heading down to the grains gathering in Geelong in Victoria on Saturday via somebody else's place in country Victoria. 
I cannot wait. I'm going to give you all lots of, um, hopefully, um, some share my insights about that and share a bit of the experience on here and also on my um, Facebook and Instagram pages. So wherever you find me, keep your eye out and I'll share the updates. And there's always soap, soap recipe videos and things coming out on the soap making channel too. So head over there if you're into the soap making. That's Ellie's Everyday Soap Making on YouTube. Bye everyone. See you again soon.